Hello, family. Welcome to season four, episode two of the Good News Network. I'm Luke Speckman. And I'm Brandon Speckman. And today we have so much spectacular news to share with you from this past month, whose faith building theme was God's splendor in September. We'll begin today's episode by highlighting this past month's inaugural services, and then share some special announcements from a few of our world sectors. Following that will be a new segment of GNN entitled Mercy Moment. Next, we have a day in the life of a dynamic, recently baptized disciple in the London church. And then, sold out Press International Publishing House's newest read will be introduced. Finally, we'll close out with good news from around the world. And so, we'll start by going back to the beginning of the month, where on Sunday, September 3rd, the Lusaka Disciples hosted their inaugural service. Under the leadership of Dilapo Ogun Badejo and Tebo Simon, the Disciples welcomed 128 souls that auspicious day. At the close of the service, Sarah, a single mom, was joyfully baptized. And then seven days later, on September 10th, there were two inaugural services held in completely different hemispheres. First was the inaugural of Hartford, Connecticut, where they had an attendance of 71 souls, one of them being Drayana, who joyfully made Jesus Lord at the end of service. What's most incredible is that she was baptized by her coworker, Catherine, who became a disciple herself just one month earlier. The second planting on September 10th was on the island nation of Madagascar in the capital city of Antananarivo. Immediately following the first historic French Africa Missions Conference in Abidjan in June, this courageous mission team of only seven sold out disciples took off and landed in Antananarivo, also called Tana for short. The Tana Seven were led by the charismatic Philippe and Rose Deary. And God blessed their extraordinary hard work with an astounding 120 in attendance and eight glorious baptisms. One of the highlights of this planting was the baptism of Romaric on August 30th, just 11 days prior to the inaugural service. Romaric came out of the water running as he has now baptized three other people. Didier, a student in sociology at the National University of Madagascar, as well as Antonio and Harry, two amazing single brothers. With multiplication like this, the Tana Church has now tripled to 21 disciples. Wow, that is absolutely incredible. Then on September 17th was the long-awaited Nairobi inaugural. The prayers of the six on the Nairobi mission team, led by Tolani and Kate Abiyadun, and fortified by the Africanist World Sector leaders, Drs. Andrew and Patrick Smelly, were more than answered with 118 in attendance, including 13 former ICOC leaders and members seeking revival. According to many, Tolani preached his best sermon to date, titled On the Mountain of the Lord from 1 Kings 18. The inaugural closed with the powerful baptism of a married man, Stephen. And finally, on September 24th, was the Laramie, Wyoming inaugural service. Under the leadership of the radical couple, Nick and Rachel Valadez, the Operation Eagle Laramie Church welcomed visiting disciples from Denver, Salt Lake City, and Los Angeles, and had 101 in attendance. Those who visited were deeply impacted and all rejoiced with the exciting baptism of Ina, a 17-year-old freshman student and Russian national who moved all the way from Russia to Laramie to study English. Prayerfully, immediately after graduation, as a mature, fruitful disciple, Ina will move back to Russia to help forcefully advance the kingdom. Indeed, nationals sacrificially returning to their homelands are so key in world evangelism. So amazing is that on all four Sundays of September, they had at least one inaugural service. A huge congratulations to all of our newest church plantings. And family, please keep them in your prayers as they continue to preach the word in these new territories. Also, don't forget to mark your calendars for the upcoming inaugural services happening near you and near your friends and family as there are still a few more in store before we close out our year of miracles. So please pray for Quito, Ecuador on October 29th, St. Petersburg, Russia also on October 29th, Port of Spain, Trinidad scheduled for November 12th, and as well on that same Sunday will be Tbilisi, Georgia. Then in Europe, prayerfully on December 3rd will be Dublin, Ireland. Lastly, for 2023, Brussels, Belgium is slated for December 10th. And speaking of marking your calendars, we want to share with you the dates of the fast approaching international missions conferences that you will definitely want to attend. For our new viewers, 
International Missions Conferences are a special opportunity for disciples in various nations to congregate together in worship, be edified through numerous lessons by heroes in the faith, and to enjoy a super encouraging fellowship of disciples from multiple nations. Through the remainder of 2023 and into 2024, there are five conferences to look forward to. The first being in London, England on October 24th and 25th, where singles, creatives, and decorated athletes across the world will convene in the heart of this great city for the first singles and AMS leadership seminar. Also in London, immediately following that conference on October 26th through 29th will be the always thrilling European Missions Conference whose theme this year is faith and boldness. 2023 will close out with a bang in Dubai, United Arab Emirates with the Promised Land Missions Conference on December 8th through the 10th. Moving into 2024, Lord willing, we'll have the Hawaiian Islands Missions Conference on February 1st through the 4th. And just after that, on February 15th to the 18th, will be the South American Missions Conference in Sao Paulo, Brazil. These conferences are sure to be unforgettable. If you're interested in attending, please speak with your church leader for more information or simply go on the host church's website to register. And now we continue to a new and touching segment featuring the International Christian Church's benevolent arm called Mercy Worldwide. Mercy is an acronym for maximizing efforts for relief and care among the youth. Following the Mercy Moment is our Day in the Life segment with Sean O'Farrell of the London Church. Enjoy. Hi family, my name is Val, or you can call me Ban Ban, and this is my incredible wife, Rachel. We have just been appointed as the new director for the Mercy Community Center in Delhi, India. We are so excited about this exciting opportunity. As Ban Ban mentioned, we are so excited about this incredible opportunity. For the past eight years, we have served as educators, both as administrators and teachers in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. We trust that God has prepared us for such a time as this, to use our talents and experience to serve the kingdom in this way, for mercy worldwide. We want to take a moment to thanks for Nick and Denise, the Mercy Directors, Ricky and Colleen, the Evangelist and the Women's Ministry Leader, in Delhi, the geographic sector leader for South Asia, and the Deepak and the teachers in Mercy Community Center. Can't wait to see you in two weeks, just in time for the South Asia Leaders Conference. And to God be all the glory. I'm Sean, Peter O'Farrell, and I was baptised uh, at the London Irish Centre um, on the 10th of September, 2023. It was announced that I was going to be going to Dublin as well. So that was, uh, that was announced in the pre-service. So that was news to me as well. So it was just like a huge day of, of news and excitement and, and totally like just next steps. So um, yeah, it was just an awesome service. Mark one with the with uh, Peter and Andrew, you know, drop their nets and immediately and, and follow it. You know, if, if that's how they reacted, should we not do the same? I think that's just the way that God's created me to be really, is um, to jump in knowing that he's got me. Being so fresh, I guess, to, to the kingdom is it's all a bit all over the place, but but for sure, it's, it's wake up anywhere between five and six, six and seven kind of thing. Um, get up, go for a prayer. So that's the first part of the day, and then have my have my study time where I'm just looking through the Word. At the moment, I'm doing my first forty days, which I think is a great like devotional to just just walk through, directing me to some great scriptures, asking some really brilliant questions, um, and some great applications as well. From there, it will be either do more reading or or go out. Um, and share just just in and around Wembley, go onto campus um, and stuff like that. And then there'll be studies throughout the day, whether they're online or in person. I'll try try and attend those and and um, really build those relationships. You know, it's great. It's great for me as a new disciple to to go through the studies again, hear things that I may not have heard or, or like had forgotten about from the first time. 
to make notes for people to just really sort of like ingrain it in me so that's that's a real big sort of push on my part is to attend those studies and to see people through those um and and then in the evenings there's there's anything really whether it's bible talks or or whether it's uh choir practice as well i was attending that which is something i'd never done before but kind of got roped into doing and i love it um and then and, and yeah and then there's like the student devo and singles ministry there was the all-night prayer and stuff like that so it's very reactive i suppose is the way i describe my day as long as i have the grounding of the of the quality quiet time in the mornings i can kind of go wherever the winds of god's will will take me throughout the day whatever's planned and whatever comes up yeah don't resist jesus you know i, I may have been quite closed off to the fact that it could have been him but equally it could have saved me a lot of pain if if I hadn't, you know. So, yeah, I just, I just think, be open, um, be encouraged. I think I'm, I'm just incredibly grateful for the man that God's made me to be. Well, thank you so much, Ban Ban and Rachel Clave, for accepting the call of God to go to India. And thanks, Sean, for sharing your story with us and for your example of radical faith in action. And now it's over to Sold Out Press International about another groundbreaking soapy book. Greetings from Sold Out Press International. We're so excited to announce the release of our newest soapy publishing, by Sages World Sector Leader, Dr. Matt Sullivan. This book is entitled, He Stoops Down to Make Me Great, The Mandate, Necessity, and Power of Prayer. In this inspiring book, Matt vividly writes about his personal journey as a disciple, and he shares his convictions on prayer from the scriptures that God has cultivated in his heart through the hardships encountered as the Spirit led him and his precious family to various parts of the world. This book helps readers to reach God's standard for greatness in their lives by bowing down in prayer. And it provides the practical tools to help disciples experience a connection and intimacy with God that births the greatest version of themselves, a version that God can work His wonders through. Head to Amazon to get a copy of this incredible read today. Congratulations, Dr. Matt Sullivan, on your first of hopefully very many books. Brandon and I are so excited to read it and add it to our Soapy Library collection. And now we move into good news from around the world. Starting in the Austro-China world sector, this past month, the Appia Samoa Disciples celebrated their four-year anniversary as a church planting. And it was a heartwarming celebration as original mission team leader, Scotty Iacopo, visited from Auckland for their anniversary service to preach the word. He passionately delivered an incredible sermon titled, Where Are You Really At? And Where Are You Going? This thought-provoking lesson prompted both disciples and friends alike to truly consider where they are at in their walk with God. Over in the Sages World Sector, Drs. Kip and Elena McKean, our movement leaders, have spent a considerable amount of time in India these past 12 months. In early September, they were able to journey from LA to preach in both the Chennai and New Delhi churches, strengthening the leaders and the disciples. Please keep Kip in your prayers as he will return again in early October for the South Asia Leadership Missions Conference. Also in Sages, a special congratulations to Dr. Helen Sullivan, who was recently appointed the Kids Kingdom Curriculum Director for all of the international Christian churches. Very needed, Helen will oversee a team of multiple teachers from different world sectors who are currently hard at work developing a new unified Kids Kingdom curriculum for the movement globally. Please pray for this incredible effort to nurture and train our children who are future disciples and as such, the future world changers. In the Northern Federation world sector, we have awesome news of one of the newest additions. Already, so many have been inspired by the recent baptism of the senior starting point guard for the University of Oregon basketball team, Jesse. Jesse aspires to play in the NBA. It is so moving to see prominent young men and women choosing to live not for themselves, but for God. To close out today's episode, we want to update you on Operation Jerusalem. 
As many of you know, in mid-December of 2022, God called Dr. Jason and Sarah Dimitri to lead the City of Angels International Christian Church in Los Angeles, thus commencing Operation Jerusalem. Operation Jerusalem is the campaign to strengthen and revitalize the LA Church, which is the Jerusalem Church of the Movement, as she has sent out so, so many mission teams and supplemental mission teams since its planting in 2007. So at the conclusion of 2022, the LA Church had 793 disciples. At the same time, the Dimitris brought a supplemental mission team of 89 disciples from San Francisco and Denver. During the 2023 LA New Year's workshop, Jason humbly put before the Lord and the church the faith goal of reaching 1,000 disciples for the Lord by the end of 2023. Amazingly, during the seven days from Monday, September 18th to Sunday, September 24th, this fiery church had 20 baptisms carrying the LA Church beyond their prayer goal of 1,000 for the Lord, more than four months before the end of the year. Let's take a look at the close of this historic service. Elisha said, let me do this. And he showed that if, if uh, uh, Elijah had said, no, 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 you have to follow me right now, he would have done it because he went back and he said goodbye to his family, but then he burned the plowing equipment, showing that he was gonna put his hand to the plow and never look back at this former life that he had. And that there's only one way you go when you're walking with God, it's forward. There is no going backwards. There's nothing to go back to. I gotta ask you, is there anything you're looking back at? Because the Bible says you're not fit to serve in the kingdom of God. Elisha said, there's nothing I'm going back to. He burned it. What's ahead for the City of Angels Church? Burn the ships. Burn the plowing equipment. You know, if you were baptized this year, I want to say this to you. Burn the plowing equipment in your life. Never look back. Because a thousand is not the end. It's not the middle. It's maybe the end of the beginning, but we are going, my brothers and sisters, into thousands. We are going one day to we're shaking the floor of this convention center. We are going, my brothers and sisters, back to the Rose Bowl at 10,000 for the Lord. At the hill will be all the glory. We've seen 374 baptisms and 58 restorations. And so now officially, after the baptisms today, we can say that we have 1,008 disciples of the City of Angels Church. And to God be all the glory. The throne of our God and we'll all bow down. The brothers and sisters had died for Christ. We all knew it was worth the sacrifice. A hand around the throne, we're gonna sing and say. That was amazing. Thank you so much, LA Church, for being living examples of what is possible with our amazing God. I cannot wait till there are congregations on every continent with more than 1,000 disciples. And to God be all the glory. If you liked today's episode, Splendor in September, please share it with your friends and family so that they too can witness some of the many ways God has shown his spectacular splendor. And join us again next month for more incredible news from October. This is Luke and Brandon Speckman reporting to you from the Good News Network. The best news you will ever see.